Welcome to lesson six of short O. Today we are talking about the word families, odd and os. We're going to start with a spelling rule. Alors on commence avec une règle d'orthographe et cette règle s'appelle floss. So this is the floss or flossy spelling rule. Alors, dans les mots, d'une syllabe. So, words with one syllable. Si la voyelle est courte, ça veut dire toute seule. So, if we're talking about a short vowel in a short word, et on entend f, u, ou s à la fin, on utilise deux f, deux l, ou deux s. So, in a short word, with a short vowel, when we hear these sounds at the end, we double the last consonant. So we have class, fell, stiff, off, fuss. Par contre, dans les mots d'une syllabe, si la voyelle est longue, ça veut dire ça dit son nom, A-E-I-O-U, et on entend F, U, ou S à la fin, on utilise seulement une lettre, F, L, U, S. So, in a short word with a long vowel sound that ends in F, U, ou S, we use one of these letters, either an F, an L, or an S. So, base, feel, life, dose, fuel. Dans les mots d'une syllabe, si la voyelle est suivie par une autre lettre. So, in a short word where the vowel is followed by another letter, et on entend F, L, U, S à la fin, on utilise une, une lettre seulement, F, L, U, S. So, in a short word with a vowel that is followed by another letter, and then the sounds f, l, u, s, s, then we just use the one level. So, fans, shelf, cobs, girl. So, let's just have one letter. So, here is a video to help you out. Ooh. S. Flossy words. When you hear one of these sounds at the end of a word, how do you know if it is spelled with one letter or two? Flossy words will help you. These short vowels are all on their own. They have no letter friends. They need two letters at the end. Cliff. Bell. Fuss. They are flossy words. Flossy words have tickle power. Flossy words have a double letter. The double letters give the vowel tickle power. <laughs> but these vowels already have a letter friend to look after them. They don't need extra protection. They only need one letter at the end. Shelf, meal, fans. Where the vowel has a letter friend, just use one letter at the end. Now that you know about flossy words, make sure you give short vowels some tickle power with a double letter. There you have it. So those are flossy words. So today we're talking about floss. Alors, la soie dentaire is floss. C'est aussi un verbe. It's also a verb to floss. Passer la soie dentaire. And it's also a dance. The floss part. I am so good at that. I'm the best in my like school, you know. That's a pretty good floss. Oh. That's actually a flawless floss. Oh, oh, oh. Just have your arms a bit higher oh. to the middle. Oh, oh, oh. oh. Kill them. Oh, no. oh. Who got that? Who won that floss, oh. that floss challenge right there? 
All right, so that is the floss dance. Being a boss is really hard. So boss, patron. Like a boss, in expression. Like a boss, come on pro. Problem. So you're in charge around here, is that fair to say? Absolutely. I'm the boss. Okay, so take us through a day in the life of the boss. Well, the first thing I do is talk to corporate, like approve memos, like lead a workshop, like a remember birthdays, like direct workflow, like my own bathroom, like micromanage, like promote synergy. Like now we have an adjective, an adjective. Bossy, autoritaire, bossy. Loss, in parts, is it no? In parts, say loss. Here's a song. I am just a shadow of the man I once used to be. All right, so that was This Loss by Corn. And this is a verb. Uh, <laughs> so that's to toss. Ça veut dire lancer ou jeter. Toss. So she tossed her flowers. Okay, this is a fish. Cod. So in Moru, cod, we use this fish to make fish and chips. And in Canada, it's found on the Atlantic Ocean side of Canada, cod. Okay, and this is God. Maintenant, normalement, on utilise un G majuscule. So usually when we talk about God, we use a capital letter for the G. If you're talking about multiple gods, then you'd use a lowercase g. Alors, si on parle de, de, de plusieurs dieux, là, ça prend une lettre minuscule. Mais si on parle de seulement un dieu, c'est bien majuscule. So you need the capital for God, usually. All right, and this is pod. Cos. So we have an expression. Like two peas in a pod. So the Olsen twins are two peas in a pod. Similaire. Like two peas in a pod. Instead of two people who are very similar in interests, actions, or appearance. Betty and Jennifer are People sometimes mistake them for sisters. So two peas in a pod. Now we have rod. So fishing rod or just rod. So in can, in can pesh. And this is to nod. So I'm nodding my head. Pour dire oui. To say yes. We nod our head. Faire un signe de la tête ou hocher la tête. All right, time to review. Nobby. Nua. Ch -ch 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 -ch. To chop. Rocky. To sob. Cut.
clock to stop. Box. maintenant la structure du verbe forget. À l'affirmatif, ça donnera I forgot, you forgot, he forgot. Une fois que tu as appris le verbe dans la liste des verbes irréguliers, il suffit de le placer partout. Interrogatif, did I forget, did you forget Est-ce que, est que j'ai oublié Est-ce que tu as oublié Alors là, c'est la même idée que tout à l'heure. Uniquement l'auxiliaire va prendre la marque du prétérit. Mais ton verbe, il faudra bien garder la base verbale de l'infinitif to forget, oublier. Parce que si tu mettais encore forgot ici, ça ferait trop, ça ferait redondant. La même chose pour la partie négative. I did not forget, je n'ai pas oublié. L'auxiliaire uniquement prend la marque du prétérit. Alors, that is the preterit in the affirmative negative and interrogative. So in the preterite, it is just the auxiliary that takes the form of preterite. So we've got, doop, did I nod? Did you floss? Oops. Did he toss? Did she pop? Did it stop? Did we chop? Did they drop? So the preterite is in the did. And each question then has the root of the verb. La base verbale is here. Subject is in the middle. And we start with the auxiliary. Okay, goodbye, quatrième. Troisième, we are talking about Johnny Depp today in his role as the Mad Hatter. So again, you can find this I Love English from June 2016 is People Johnny Depp. This is the Mad Hatter. There is a place like no place on earth. 
Some say to survive it, you need to be as mad as a hatter. Which luckily, I am. Alice, you're terribly late, you know. Naughty. I play the uh, Mad Hatter. He's mad. He's unpredictable. To be able to do anything with Tim Burton is a real honor. What a regrettably large head you have. I should very much like to have it. I used to have the White Queen, you know. Poor dear, her head is so small. It's tiny. It's a pimple of a head. <laughs> Stop that. The Mad Hatter is a fascinating character. You see instantly what he's feeling. Darn, what the bloody red king! Like a mood ring. His emotions are very, very close to the surface. Why is it you're always too small or too tall? As they travel through Wonderland, Alice and the Hatter complete one another like a brother and sister do. He is very protective of her and she's very protective of him. This is impossible. And if you believe it is. In this epic battle, especially with a sword. And I've done so many as Captain Jack that the challenge is to find how the how to sword fight. We have our champion. Being able to play the Mad Hatter and breathe life in Tim's vision was a dream come true. So Johnny Depp has played many characters. One of his most famous characters is Jack Sparrow. So this is Johnny Depp as Jack Sparrow, the pirate. And then we have Johnny Depp as Willy Wonka. This is from Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, Willy Wonka. And then my favorite was Edward Scissorhands. So when I was your age, this was the movie that came out. Edward Scissorhands. Okay, so these are bobbins. They're on the Mad Hatter's jacket. Bobbins. So here are the short O words that you will hear. Johnny. Want. Now here, it's an a that is making the aw sound. So when A is next to a W, you say it's a bossy W, it makes an aw sound often. So that is want. Todd, constantly. Scottish, watch again that we have a capital for this nationality. Costume, on, cause. So AU also says Ah, sometimes like August. Ah, caused. Bobbins. Body. Often. And chocolate. Open your magazine and listen to the article on Johnny Depp. Johnny Depp is the Mad Hatter. Johnny Depp is back in the second Alice in Wonderland film. We look at his version of the very eccentric character, the Mad Hatter. A very strange character. From Jack Sparrow to Edward Scissorhands, Johnny Depp has played many strange roles, but the Mad Hatter is the strangest. Johnny imagined the Hatter as being frozen in time. He explains that the Hatter went mad drinking tea with the same people for ten years, while waiting for Alice to return. Johnny also wanted to make his hatter more human. He didn't want to create a second Willy Wonka, Charlie in the Chocolate Factory, who has often been accused of being a freak. Johnny wanted us to connect with the hatter. The hatter comes to life. Johnny does a lot of research on the characters he plays. For Jack Sparrow in Pirates of the Caribbean, Johnny researched 18th century pirates. For the Mad Hatter, he painted watercolours of how he imagined the character. He was surprised to discover that his drawings were similar to those of the film's producer, Tim Burton. Tim's version had bigger eyes. That's why Johnny's eyes are very big in the film. Hatter poisoned by mercury. Johnny learnt that in the 19th century, real hatters used glue with mercury to make hats. 
the mercury made some of the hatters go mad. This information inspired Johnny. He imagined that the mercury had affected his hatter's body. The electric orange hair and the strange skin colour are caused by mercury poisoning. Johnny also wears green contact lenses to give the hatter crazy eyes. Have you noticed that one of his eyes always looks past you? The Hatter's Bizarre Accents The big challenge for Johnny was giving the Hatter two personalities. In the present, he is a sweet, innocent character. But when he remembers the past, he is angry and speaks with a Scottish accent. Johnny had to constantly change from one to the other. It was the personal touch he added to one of the most famous characters of English literature. The American actor is talented at doing other British accents. For example, Jack Sparrow has two English accents, a high-class one and a more working-class accent. And the barber Sweeney Todd speaks like a real Londoner. Dressing the Hatter The Hatter's clothes evoke his profession. His coat is decorated with tools and accessories a hatter uses, scissors, bobbins, ribbons, thimbles and hat pins. The costume helped Johnny to get into the poetic role of the hatter. Like Johnny's other eccentric characters, the hatter's outfit helps to make him unique and totally unforgettable. Goodbye, Twasium.